Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reevy, along with the nicest nurse herself, Sandy <laughs> Reevy. Hi. Hi, everybody from Cincinnati. It is episode 249, May 1st. Let's get right into it. In the transits, we have today Pluto stationing retrograde. A return. And same day, Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun. It's a Kazemi. Thursday, May 4th, Venus square Neptune. Realism. Huh? And Venus sextile Jupiter. Give advice. And Friday, May 5th, full moon at 15 degrees of Scorpio. Lunar eclipse. And Venus ingress cancer on Sunday, May 7th to wrap up. Gather your tribe. Then in talisman times, we have a new talisman of month for May. And on the horizon, we have our CWS webinar all about the new eclipses, ready and waiting for you for replay on patreon.com, as well as the CWS May forecast and cheat sheet. Then Sandy and I are going to see you all hopefully in Tampa, Florida at the I Can Do It event, May 19th through the 21st. And in our house, I have a new meditation for you. So listen in and enjoy. Stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars. It's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute, jump in the river. Wash yourself clean so you can deliver you. The story of you does... Hello, Nasus nurse. How is Cincinnati? I got here, um, well recently and went right to the hospital. And in fact, that was my first um, stop. How do you stop? Stop. <laughs> um, um, no, so it's good. My, my mom is doing really well. She had makeup on. She looked great. She's moving her leg. She She's doing really well. She broke her pelvis, you know, in two places. So she's been there for two weeks. And so I'm down here in Cincinnati for a elongated time just to help her come home from the hospital. Right. Which is going to be a transition and, but she's been doing so good at physical therapy and I think ready to come home. Yeah. 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 She's ready. Yeah. And have us put the, put all the flowers in. I'm ready yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. Ready to get to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So going direct to all you listeners, I s- there, we have a message from Star from New York saying, five stars, I so enjoyed our astrology reading today. Thank you so much, Sandy. Mm. <clears throat> Sweet message. Short yeah, I, and to the point. We like you know, I really like to hear back uh, from, from anyone, everyone, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been getting some messages. We've been talismans, you know, I've been selling a lot of talismans or some really good once um and i'm just hearing back from people that are you know have received them they were like perfect we do the activation call so i'm getting a lot of little 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 short message feedback that i it's easier to read right it's easier and sweet and it makes me it elevates my my uh my work that i do yeah yeah thank you So let's move into the transits. We have today, May 1st, Pluto stationing retrograde. We also have another transit after this, but let's discuss Pluto stationing retrograde. So Pluto just moved in the end of March into zero degree Aquarius in the sky. And Mm -hmm. this is the first time in 20 years that he's been out of Capricorn, where Pluto and Capricorn about... Um, transforming big structures, like governmental structures, right? Capricorn type things. And so he just got here the end of March and here we are at the beginning of May and he's retrograding already at zero Aquarius to head back into Capricorn for a period of time to do a return, meaning mm-hmm. finalize reparations that of the last 20 years when he was in Capricorn. What finalization does it need to to instill in us for moving more into the Aquarian age of humanitarianism and you know inclusivity? Uh, so to pay attention to this March 23rd until 
now um, and then all the way from now until June 12th. So this is about a nut when he's moving back into it and we'll talk about it then, but between this March 23rd and June 12th, this period is when he's making his first step in our, in our American generation, moving into um, Aquarius. And just as an example, you know, um, you know, for inclusivity for everyone, you know, Mattel, I just was, got this message the other day that Mattel, the Barbie doll company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have I yeah. mentioned that to you that they've just put out just two nights ago, they announced their all inclusivity Barbie doll line. And the first doll has already been revealed and it's a, um, a doll with down syndrome. I, I did see that on, on the news. Yes. And also inclusivity. I just wanted to. Oh, click. inclusivity. Yes. Inclusivity. I'm yes. saying my Mercury in Pisces is saying it wrong. Activity. Yeah. Yeah. Activity. No. Well, we can be active in the inclusivity. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so stuff like that, things like that, that includes everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And not just a, a particular set of people that were running the rules. Right. And I love that. Should be like, yeah. When I saw the, uh, when I saw the report, I got to see the video of yeah. The, the young woman who it was, you know, modeled after, and she was so excited to see it. I mean, what a proud moment, right? And you're also having this, you're, you're, you're pioneering this classic toy to be so inclusive and represent the population, you know, the human population. It's great. I'm yeah, very- and I think that's a Pluto Aquarius scenario for sure. Uh, so the second transit of today, May 1st, is Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun. Yeah, and this is the Kazemi. And this happens at 628 p.m. Central Time. And it's to understand what is stable and reliable. What can you count on? You know, this Mercury is in the sign of Taurus. So what can be built? here and upon right like making making something out of a tactile uh uh product for st- stability and reliability and it, i when i was writing this i was like what can you build here in and upon right and i'm like oh a sit upon right is- you don't know what a sit upon is that a toilet no, it's a <laughs> I don't Girl know. Scout activity that when we went camping on our Girl Scout weekends, we had everyone had to make a sit upon, which literally was the simple stitching of a bunch of newspapers and some <laughs> like like vinyl cloth that you stitch the edges with yarn and it was your sit upon so that you would carry it and had a strap. You can put a strap on it. And so anywhere you went, if you were sitting around the campfire or sitting out in the woods, you could, you'd always have your sit upon. That's what I, what an interesting thing. <laughs> right. And everybody made their own. Right. And so uh, it just reminded me of what can, what tactile thing could you make that you need to sit upon, stand yeah. upon. Yeah. Right. With with whatever resources you have around, which newspaper, perfect, especially in that time, there's not a lot of newspapers anymore. <laughs> what, how, how do you make a sit upon now in this age? Um, probably, Copy paper. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Garbage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. So really to understand what is stable and reliable and mm-hmm. to, to, you know, what is at hand that you can build on instead of having to um, um, uh, invent something new, you know, you have, you have something it's, you know, it kind of reminds me of not that I'm talking about Jerry. um, Seinfeld. What? Did you hear about Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah. Um, No, Jerry Springer. Oh yeah. Jerry Springer. Springer. My goodness. Passed away. Yeah. 
Yeah. But we saw him recently. He lives up the street from us. In Chicago, I, I, I used to see him around Chicago um, at my old job when I was uh, yeah. a server. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, so yeah, he, he, he left the planet, but anyway, just saying, you know, yeah. a lot of people leave during the eclipse, eclipse season. Right. All right. So, enough about Sid Pons and Jerry Springer. Yeah. What, what, a, what an interesting conversation. Um, so Thursday, May 4th, may the fourth be with you. Um, <laughs> Venus, where Neptune. Yeah, this is about realism, question mark. Ha ha, not really. It's more like disillusionment, right? Anytime, although there's a reception here, meaning that Venus is in Gemini and in making a square, that's the stress 90 degree angle with Neptune in Pisces, which Venus is exalted in. So it could feel like a loss of hope, a loss of desire, um, unsure of your wants, um, read a novel or write your own. It's about going into a space that's um, not real. Yeah. So if you have to do something really important on Thursday, um, maybe don't sign on the dotted line. We got Mercury still retrograde, but it's more about, are you sure you even want this? Or is somebody really trying to do a big sales number on you? Um, again, it's probably not real. It's like, be careful of making promises here. So just color. I brought my, my, my markers in my coloring book. So I'm just going to color on this day. Perfect. Yeah. And same day, May 4th, Venus sextile Jupiter. So yeah, later in the day, we have these two benefics are available to give helpful and supportive responses um, that are fit for action. And, you know, this is a nice giving advice period. So you're either giving advice or asking for advice. Do you need someone to help you with something to maybe just be a sounding board possibly, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a, this is, I like this. It's a sextile aspect with the two benefics. Interesting day. <laughs> So Friday, May 5th, full moon at 15 degrees of Scorpio. Go to Mayo. Uh, yeah. And we're, and then this is the lunar, lunar eclipse where this is not seen in the United States. We talk about this in the eclipse webinar, Susan Goodell and I did, that's available on Patreon, but this is the penumbra. So it's not a total, um, mm -hmm. There's about 5 billion people that will be able to watch this in the European area, uh, but it's not going to be seen here. So this is a full moon. So think about it. The, the sun is in 15 degrees of Taurus, mm -hmm. making this opposition moon at 15 opposite Scorpio. And, you know, there's a trine. The moon is making a trine to Mars. Although the sun is conjunct Uranus and conjunct the North Node. So there really is this um, abrupt shift uh, with much needed direction change. So, you know, they always, it's always said that eclipses, you know, they come in pairs. This is mm -hmm. the second of the two, because it's two weeks after what we had the solar eclipse that you saw in Bali. Right. Um, and those pictures uh, are on the, on the webinar that you just webinar. did. Yeah, the new the new Eclipse season webinar with you, you and Susan on Patreon. Check it out. Yeah, and so this is the lunar eclipse that's partnered with that solar eclipse um, in, in April 20th. So, and those, and full moons are all about that kind of um, way for us to be witness of whatever it is in our life that is, we are kind of creating. Right. So take a to take a look at it and be well, aware. It's, it's it's seeing things full scale, right? It's like the emotions are all lit up, full moon. Mm -hmm. Um can't hide. What do you not like about scenarios in your in your life that you get to make a much needed change? It's a there's a trine to the moon. So the moon is making a trine 
and applying trying to Mars and with reception because the moon is in Scorpio ruled by Mars, making an uh, applying trying to it. So that part is the much needed direction change. Mm -hmm. However, the sun, you know, on the other side of the chart, the sun is with North Node and Uranus. And so those, that combination is an abrupt shift, right? So combine that and say abrupt shift, yet a much needed direction change. Mm -hmm. So eclipses are a dramatic closing and a dramatic opening of something new. So what is this much needed change that you've been wanting to do? Um, I've got a lot of uh, readings coming up that people are said, I've always wanted to do this one thing and 25 years has passed. Is it too late? So to ask those questions mm -hmm. during this, you know, this eclipse season is the perfect thing to say, is it too late? No, you now you've got your three kids. It's been 25 years. Now you have, you know, your, your kids are 25 and younger and they're, they're old enough for you to go on to make your second approach to career. So things like that, what seems to be abrupt, but you need to make that change. Mm -hmm. What is it in your world? Yeah. And Sunday, May 7th, Venus ingress cancer. I like this. You know, Venus is coming out of Gemini and moving into cancer. And she doesn't have any, any uh, she has triplicity for day charts, uh, but she, she doesn't have any hampers or hindrances in, in cancer. So this is gathering your tribe, you know, enjoy your social self in a comfy environment. You know, are you redecorating your house? Are you spending more time? Are you in, are you gathering people? Are you having parties? You know, it's kind of like, get it, get the, get the old cookbooks out, yes. right? Um, get some of those. I love that. Those comforting, those comfort foods mashed potatoes, right? Or beef stroganoff. Those are some of mine. Um, <laughs> but, you know, gather your tribe, gather your family. Right. And that this is one reason because it'll stay here for, you know, a month that I picked the talisman of the month in order to help us do that at this time frame. Yes. And also, even though the meditation that is going to be new and unveiled uh, here on the podcast. I also have another meditation that is all about cancer and it's about scanning through your body and finding those different emotions. I like this. I like that meditation for, for this transit as well. Mm -hmm. Well, can they so, get to that on this podcast too? Um, best way to do it is go over to astrology meditations. I'll go ahead and add that link into the show notes. So <laughs> let's move, yeah, let's move into talisman times where it's going to be a quick one because no finish, no upcoming. It is eclipse season. So let's move into the talisman of the month, which we are announcing for the first time for May, yes. which is to gather successfully in group activity. I understand this message. In fact, I feel it. We all get along extremely well. The current members welcome the new ones. I know. I really I like that. And whether you're talking about a family and, you know, where our family is welcome, welcoming in some new members, there's some pregnancies and, um, for particularly for me, this Venus and cancer will, you know, cause I'm going to be in, in with my family, my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, my mom, you know, you'll come down. We're gathering because my mom needs some support right now. So, you know, in an, in a comfortable environment, you know, we made a, a, mo a note to mom, don't worry, we'll keep you safe at your house and you don't need to go to uh, assisted right. living or anything like that. So we're gathering, we're gathering our tribe together for an enjoyable social engagement in a comfortable environment. Yeah, that's what's happening. Love it, love it. Also, I think that's pretty much a wrap on Talisman Times. Let's move into On the Horizon, where um, just this last week, we recorded both the CWS webinar 
all on that new eclipse season and includes the videos I took in Bali. It includes pretty much eclipse 101, as well as what's happening this season with the new eclipse. Also, we just recorded the astrology forecast for May that is ready and waiting for you for with a replay on patreon.com and make sure um, with these, the, with the forecast and with the cheat sheet, you can come in on the entry level, that little dipper um, tier. But if you wanted to get the webinar, go ahead and sign up for that free Big Dipper trial. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up on the horizon is May 19th through the 21st. We will be traveling out to Tampa, Florida for the Hay House I Can Do It event. These are fabulous events oh, yeah. that bring a wonderful community together of mindfulness, of personal development, of, you know, spirituality, of just, I mean, it's a great community. I really think that everyone's working on themselves. Everyone's going for the things that they want. They're being themselves at the same mm -hmm. time. So we would love to have you there. There are going to, the lineup of all of the speakers is exciting and we hope to see you there. I'm going to see some people I know that are going. I'm excited. So take a look at it. If you're, it's a Friday night, um, it begins with a keynote speaker and then all day Saturday, all day Sunday with, and these are people like Colette, Baron Reed and Dr. Brian Weiss and Gabby Bernstein and Sonia and so many people that have not been on stage or in the public are gathering all together at the same time. Right. So, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see everybody and get back into the, um, into the gig. Right? And as we know, you know, because we've all been a little, uh, starved for it. These in-person events, it is, there's a magnetism, there's an uplifting atmosphere, there's an excitement. Um, we all miss a little bit of those in-person events. And this is just a, a great one to attend because you, you are uplifted, you're energized by the end of it. And you're, I mean, this is from my experience, I'm always a little bit sad <laughs> to say goodbye to everyone. And so. hopefully, you know, they told me they're going to start back up again. And that's important for us all to know that we've come out of this and, you know, yeah, things aren't normal, but some things can, uh, can help us continue to move in the right direction. Right. And I feel like it's going to be very joyous because we're all missing that. I'm, I'm actually in Austin right now. Um, at my boyfriend's tech conference, one 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 of the ones that he's going to um, being a panelist on, and we just had a survival party, and oh. the whole theme was we all survived COVID. Let's enjoy. Let's don't forget the meaning of life and being alive. And so they brought in this, uh, I guess, Grammy nominated. DJ. And although that's not normally my jam, I had a great time. It was, it was a great survival party. <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> we get to have some survival parties while we're, while we're in Tampa, Florida. Um, I won't announce anything really about the retreat 2024 list, but don't forget, we do have um, a spot left for Amargo Grease. So if you are interested, make sure to reach out, ask questions, engage. Don't let this opportunity, you know, come and pass. Because as far as I have heard, Greece is beautiful. Yeah, it really is. And I was talking to my friend out there and she says, oh my gosh, the tourism is just massive now in Greece. So if it's, if it's increasing, you know, come, come now, uh, before it gets too crowded. Although we're going, we're spending majority of our time in a Margos Island, which is very, um, much more on the remote side. 
yeah, it's it's the last island on the ferry trip and blah, blah, blah. It's very uh, unique and uh, private. Okay, so that leads us into our house. And I know that you had a quick um, topic you wanted to discuss before we get into the meditation. <laughs> well, you know, if somebody brought to my- An interesting transition. Let's- <laughs> Uh, a client brought this to my attention about, do I know about Wendy's, you know, the food, fast food service, Wendy's is doing a mercury and retrograde menu. Wow. Uh, from April 21st to May, May 14th, which is the, uh, the elongation of the mercury retrograde period. So and they have their own astrologer too. What? Uh, can I read the first little tiny paragraph? Yeah. So this is on their website. Um, when things go haywire, astrologists know to check if Mercury is entering retrograde. Wendy's is offering a biggie bag of comfort to help all the zodiac, the zodiac signs survive the chaos of Mercury retrograde with four weeks of Mercury menu deals. Wow. <laughs> How funny is that? It's like that is so crazy. This is their website. What does Mercury retrograde mean? And it says, if you've dabbled in astrology or have a cousin that loves crystals, you may have heard the concept <laughs> of Mercury entering retrograde. Three times a year, Mercury appears to travel backwards or retrograde, causing misfortune on Earth for those looking to the stars. Mercury retrograde is often linked to, to weeks of snafus, from relationship tension to undelivered messages or the wrecked travel plans to flat tires. Wendy's is helping fans survive this time of chaos with the out of this world Mercury menu deals. Wow. 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 That's all I can say. I like never could I have ever imagined a fast food. Mercury retrograde tips Hello. for success. Hold on. Don't you want to know the tips for success? Yeah. But I also want to mention too, that Wendy's is like my go-to so I, I never eat fast food, but I allow myself on road trips because there's slim pickings and Wendy's is always my, my choice. Because they grill their burgers. Oh, and it's so good. And they add all of the like ingredients on there and it's just the lettuce is crunchy and, and, oh, it's just so good. And but their fries are good too. Okay, so let's talk Mercury about- Mercury retrograde tips for success. Wendy's has your back during this chaotic time. If Mercury retrograde affects your relationships, maybe you regret sending that hangry text. <laughs> know that Wendy's can always help smooth things over by taking the guesswork out of meal time. So pair your next horoscope reading with craveable Wendy's favorites. <laughs> How crazy. How crazy. So apparently there's like, you know, there's always caveats here. Download the Wendy's app and find biggie comfort in our Mercury menu deals. And and starting on Friday, um, uh, let's see, they did buy one, get one, a dollar uh sandwich with purchase. And then they're doing free crispy chicken sandwich with per purchase. Then they're doing a free six piece chicken McNuggets with purchase. And anyway, they're doing um, free That's like with, with purchases. Okay, I'm going to have to plan a road trip soon. <laughs> you know, I think it's so funny. And, and I'd like to just, uh, you know, I, I might head over there because, you know, I'm really not home and I have a and car. Roger. And, and uh, just kind of give them a thumbs up and say, you know, I'm buying this because you're doing the Mercury menu. So, <laughs> it is pretty creative. I'm, I'm impressed. One last thing they say, while Mercury retrograde might have you on edge, you can always count on Wendy's to have your back. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so funny, you know, and, and just bringing that to attention. Um, okay, so there we go. I love it. So let's see, let's, I know it's a little bit of a transition, but let's move into the meditation I have for you all. So get into a, 
full place and let's begin. <sighs> okay, perfect. Thank you, Alex. In a moment, we will begin an active meditation. To begin, find a place close to you that needs your attention, critical eye, and active service. Something small that could greatly use a few minutes of your time. Whether it's organizing the top of your desk, a drawer that's been neglected, some laundry that's waiting for folding, or something else you can find that is related to organization, health, or service. Take this moment to get into position or pause the episode here if you need to. Let's begin. Many years ago, one of my teachers taught me that we can make sacred any act, even something as unglamorous as cleaning a toilet. When we do the undesirable, unpleasant, and thankless tasks, especially with an intention, we are living fully. The lessons we can learn are endless, but first, we can learn that whatever we do, when we do it wholeheartedly, to the best of our ability, investing our intentions and attention fully, we give the task, as well as ourselves, importance, respect, and reverence. Secondly, throughout the task, we are practicing mindfulness, focusing on the present moment and the task at hand allows us to feel what it's like to be fully present, making it easier to sharpen our minds, create more peace, and ultimately live a fully present life. So whatever the task is that you have chosen to work on in this moment, begin now. There is nowhere else that you need to be Nothing else you must be focused on. This task has become your meditation. And I will occasionally chime in to check in on you. As you become more present 
in whatever it is you are doing. Explore ways that you can deepen your attention. Maybe it's in noticing the sensations of the items you touch. Noticing their colors or their overall essence. Maybe in focusing, you've lost a little attention on your back and core. So think about straightening your spine, flexing your core, and pulling your shoulders back. Or notice what thoughts or memories may be tied to these items or the ones that just creep into mind. Notice them and then let them go. If, at any time, you are becoming overwhelmed by the task or feel that you're running out of time, give yourself a more achievable goal or carve out more time to complete after this meditation is over by playing some uplifting music or setting a timer for yourself. When we can invest this type of attention and focus into our day, it has the ability to heighten our productivity, connection, purpose, and energy. Remember that any act can be made this sacred and try this practice out in more areas of your life. Thank you for getting to work with me during this Virgo meditation. I welcome you to keep this heightened sense of presence and attention throughout the rest of your day. And I'll see you back here at Astrology Meditation soon. Well, thank you everybody for joining in on this episode of Astrological Intentions. I'm your host, Alex Reevy, and we are signing off. And before we do, do not forget to give us those five-star reviews that we love so much or email me, alex at intentionbeads.com with your feedback. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next week. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars. It's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute, jump in the river. Wash yourself clean so you can deliver you. The story of you, the story.